And Rich, we have breaking news out of Dayton. We are on the scene of a fire. In, in television the news, we all know to win in your market, you have to own breaking news and weather. And this is right about the worst of it. And to own it, you have to be on it 24-7, 365 days a year. Significant damage. The folks who are on it here at WHIO-TV and Cox Media Group Ohio are our breaking news team members. They sit in the heart of our cross-platform newsroom, monitoring, responding, and gathering breaking news and weather 24-7. And it is those first responders on the team who are gathering in the field. First responder Nick Graham heads out at 4 a.m. Monday through Friday. All responders are equipped with gear needed to serve all platforms, digital, radio, television, and print. All right, I'm just kind of going through my checklist. Uh, I go through every morning for the uh, breaking news team and when I'm heading out for traffic tracker. Got my live view unit. Uh, I'm using to send back live video using uh, my dash cam. I always have mounted on the dash. Uh, carry digital SLR camera for shooting video and stills along with iFi card. Uh, iFi card I can use to send stills and video back to my iPhone that I can quickly send back to the station. Make sure I have extra batteries, extra lenses, all kinds of stuff like that. Uh, always have my scanner on me. Uh, I'm listening for uh, the live police scanner, fire, stuff like that. Live view unit is very important to have. Uh, you can see actually what it's transmitting as you're, uh, it's booting up now, but as it's uh, sending live video, you can see what it's transmitting back to the station. Uh, I also have the big camera, big P2 camera, and tripod, microphones back there for uh, shooting video uh, for TV. One of the most important things to have is uh, iPhone uh, for recording audio interviews that I can send back for radio and for the breaking news team desk to have additional information for calling back uh, for them to be calling me for information and dispatching me. It starts with scanner traffic or a tip. Hey, Nick, we've got a report of a couple of slide offs and the breaking news team dispatches the first responder to the scene quickly. So they arrive to action like this Then had to actually physically carry those men out of the car. But often on scene as emergency crews are arriving. You sometimes see our first responders live on television as they let the live view and dash cam do the work for them while they're out gathering stills and close-up video or gathering interviews so we can quickly write a digital TV or radio story. That's our first responder questioning a suspect in the cruiser. And the first responder doesn't hesitate to head to a scene. This concept allows television and print reporter photo crews to concentrate on their enterprise content until the big story breaks. Sorry, I took your world away from you, Juan. That was not my scene. Apologies from a convicted killer. We're there as the man accused of killing a 13-year-old girl is hauled off to jail. Nick is traffic tracker in the morning commute, watching for things like this. Whoa. During snowy commutes, we roll on his live view signal constantly. For the latest on the breaking news story, we are told they've gone to, into a defensive firefighting mode. Because Jim Milkler is our first responder through the noon and 90, He's shooting VOs and VOSOTs that help keep story count high. The first responders can be a producer's best friend. We're always looking for the latest information, the best video, and then when you have somebody that's just roaming the area looking for that stuff, and there are, we're just basically waiting for them to tune in a live shot. When we had a fire last Friday, we were just waiting for Jim to get there, and as soon as he got there, we got our live shot up and we were ready. The competition, there's, there is no competition because they're still waiting to get out there, but we're already there. We just have the latest stuff available. Where we were waiting maybe four years ago, there was a shooting in Dayton, but we had to wait for somebody to get there. We had to wait for them to power up to get their truck going. And it just took a lot of time. And now it's like we're right there. That truck is right there. That shot is right there. It's just a matter of getting the information and finding a great spot to put it in. I want to show you a live picture. This is on Dorothy Lane. Just Our goal is to have at least one breaking news live shot each half hour. Well, you can't overstate exactly what the first responders do for the newscast because, you know, before we had these guys out on the field, we, breaking news was few and far between. You know, we could get the information, but getting those live pictures or even still photos and that information you can only get when you're on the scene, that is just amazing, the capabilities we have today. I mean, we've got these guys that are on the scenes of crashes, standoffs, they're on the scene of breaking weather events, and 
we can watch it and see it as they're seeing it because of our live view capabilities with our traffic tracker unit out there on the scene of these things. And we have been able to use, the, I remember just, I think on Friday, we had three or four breaking stories in one newscast. And you know, that's almost unheard of. And it wasn't just, this is happening. It's, this is happening, here's video, here's live pictures, and here's the most up-to-date information. And I think it's a real service to the viewer. Some of our first responders, they're making the jump in front of the camera too. Well, it's interesting because now you almost have complete journalistic control over an actual story. You shoot it, you track it, you front it, and then you have the opportunity to write it for the newspaper as well, while simultaneously updating for all of our websites and also for, uh, for our friends in radio. It's a very unique opportunity, all-encompassing. They're becoming true multimedia journalists with skills to shoot and edit video, report live on camera, and voice for radio and write digital and print stories. And for the first time in a long time, we were able to send two-person GO teams to pursue local angles on national breaking stories, like Ohio Task Force One helping Hurricane Sandy victims. While McQuinn and Yowler's neighbors had concerns for their whereabouts, this view of James Holmes' apartment reconfirms the concerns his neighbors had for him and the Aurora Colorado theater shootings when two locals were shot, one killed. The two-person crew, ultimately made up of two multimedia journalists, were able to cover it for all digital, radio, television, and print.